Twitch. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Taylor Gray, and this is COVID Community. Um, we are taking some time to create space for conversations during a very interesting time in our society uh, where we are, we're interacting with a pandemic, and uh, many of us are learning what that means for the first time. So in that, the, the social conversation does not stop. It actually progresses in different ways. So we hope that this space is a good space for you to process with us some things that we're observing. So um, I got my esteemed co-host, Armand, wake up. How you feeling, bro? What's going on? Don't. Kings, bro. <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm really good. I'm good. How are you? Man, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. <laughs> really, tired of what? That's real. I'm tired of this? Tired of, of this. Yeah, I'm yeah. tired of, of all right. of this. I'm like, ready to go back to work. I'm ready, yeah. I'm ready to dap some people. I'm ready to give out some hugs. Like, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I just feel like I have to think two and three times about everything. Yeah. And that's extra mental energy, so... Yeah. But yeah, I'm you know I don't mean to be a downer. Um, God's real. still getting control. <laughs> Sound <laughs> don't, don't, don't hit us with the God is still. <laughs> hey, you know it is. It, it is true. We got a guest today. Um, the homie, the the uh, I would say Renaissance man. Yes. Who has many tools in the toolkit? Yes. Many blades on the switchblade and I was waiting to see where you was gonna take that one. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I was thinking I was, I was thinking of the Swiss Army knife, but I think I didn't come up with it quick enough. The homie Terrell Carter Thanks, is bro. with us. Thank Appreciate you for you. for joining us, bro. Thanks for making me feel welcome. Yeah. I'm I, literally uh, a fan of both of you. So like I don't I my wife is very, very she on it. You see I can't even travel without my own. So like I came out of the out of the house just for y'all. Nobody else gets this love. I feel honored, bro. I appreciate that. I, I feel honored. I hope we can make it worth your while. Yeah. I hope you can make it worth their while, too. So some, There's some gems in there. I'm not worried about that. Sure. Yeah. Terrell won't give us some, he won't give us some fire, some hot fire. Spread oh, some dialogue. gems, not germs. Yeah. 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 Coming to a... Yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, so, we have uh, a whole lot of things that we could talk about, but um, all three of us have a unique history. Um, we... Mm -hmm. We primarily started connecting with each other through music. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of an interesting time to interact with music right now. Um, I think people are looking for things from music like never before. It's not just entertainment quality. It's like help us feel better mm. type of stuff. So uh, what kind of music have you guys been listening to during this whole thing? With me, yeah, of course. You get warm out, so I, I've been listening to, to uh, 90s gangster rap. <laughs> <laughs> I've been aggressive. I gotta get like, yo, I'm in the house, I'm working at home all day, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got my family with me, and it's like, I need that that escape, that break. So, if I need to, so what type of records though? Like, oh, I mean, everything NWA, DJ Quick, mm. Bob D, uh, Griselda, <laughs> like. All of that. I need the more aggressive, the better. Rockefeller, of course, state property. I'm sorry I missed that era. For real. <sighs> missed it. Man. Time, timelessness. I yeah. missed the West Coast. I didn't miss the East Coast. But I missed the West Coast. That's, that was a good time. And to be there, like I was in California when the L.A. riots were happening. It was very, it was Are you very serious? interesting. Like Rodney King type? Yeah. Yeah. We, li we, moved to, uh, we moved to Crenshaw maybe like three or four months after it happened. We stayed mm -hmm. with my uncle for a little bit in between when my dad was getting stationed in Hawaii. We were living in uh, like Southern California. And so when you hear the chronic, um, there's a lot of skits taken from the riots. And you're seeing a, or you hear a lot of um, like black empowerment mm. and uh, uh, self-worth that people were discovering through the riots. And I think it's just interesting that as we, seems we've sort of gone 360 and that seems to be one of the many mantras of the day. I thought that was really interesting. For real. Mm. Never been a fan of West Coast music, unfortunately. None? Bro, I, bro. I mean, killers out there. I have to just, like, I realize, like, guys like Dr. Dre and the whole NWA, like, Snoop. they did what they did, Snoop, all that. But I just could not get over West Coast, like, sonically. The little twang, twang, twang. Like, I just, it made me cringe, bro. I was super Midwest, yeah. East Coast yeah. production. But <laughs> ring, ring. Armand is dying. Right I, now. I'm well, serious, bro. No, we had a conversation because when, when Terrell and I really, like, first started, like, linking up, I tried to put him on a Nipsey. 
came to a shop and I was like, yo. Uh, hold on. All right. All right, all right. Yeah, so yeah. you rejected yeah. Oh, wait. So, so did you come around, though, before he died? Or was it? it the was, conversation I, was Yeah, the, the died. conversation okay. started before that. But it was just one of those things like, like the moment I heard West Coast rapper. And I think I might have just heard the wrong first song. You know, I was like, oh, okay. That's a, that's like, and I re- I, it's like, it was like, important. yeah, it was like, I respected it, what he was doing, like, as a, like, you know, because he clearly had huge impact. But I was not, <laughs> whenever you I was not the streaming. Respect, I'm serious. Like, you know, it's the same thing with, him. it's the yeah. same thing with Dr. Dre. It's the same thing with Tupac. It's the same thing with Nipsey. Mm-hmm. Kendrick is different, though. Because Kendrick invited sounds from all over the U.S., so you really can't listen to Kendrick and be like, "Oh yeah, that's West Coast." He does; he's not the typical. <laughs> I, I say Kendrick, Kendrick is super West Coast. Really? Super West yes. Coast. Absolutely. We gonna be all right. Uh, that, the Black of the Bear. Like that's what I'm saying. That's but well. all those. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying, all those other guys. Very rarely did you hear. Uh, Dr. Dre, N.W.A. Be like, you know what? Let's go ahead and get this East Coast Dirty South production to give it a different feel. It was like, nah, it's West Coast or nothing. I think it was just like the evolving of things happening because Kendrick is like the grandchild of Dre, Snoop, Q, Easy. So we're gonna we're gonna devolve into a hip hop debate real quick, right. you know. Like, and this is just what happens in the middle of these kind of conversations. Always, always had, so, so he baits cool. me. Every I know, time I know. I well, but, but he does me too. He does the same thing with me. Too, I can. We, I like to talk about music. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Check it out. <laughs> so, so now I need to know what you're listening to. Like, what what are you listening to now? I'm gonna be honest, bro. I'm listening to myself, bro. Yes. I need to mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. See, Nothing I was about to. I was about to hit you. Yes. I can't. Oh. <laughs> old you or new you? Uh, 75% old me. Mm. 25% new stuff. Streets? No, not that old. Okay. Although, okay. I had, I, <laughs> one of my homies sent me a mixtape we released when I was 18, bro. Say, they don't know what I'm talking about. Tell them who Streets uh, is. Streets the Beast. Uh, yeah. Growing up, like, I was rapping at 16, 17. I did a talent show okay. in Columbus and Sinatra was at the talent show. He was dating my high school best friend, you know. <clears throat> so he came for that reason, you know, she pulled up and he just literally saw me do my thing, 17. And Sinatra at the time, he was producing for, like he was working with like Bink who produced for Jay-Z, produced for Jim Jones. Like he had some clout in Columbus. Yeah, yeah. Had his little team, chief execs. And uh, literally at 17, 18, put me up under his wing, bro. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and we produced some stuff together, but that was Streets the Beast. But yeah. you're not listening to him. You're listening to Rap Will Survive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rap Will Survive. Trace Will Survive. Pull OH out a couple times. Mm. Listen to OH a few months ago. Look, yeah. y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Maybe you engage with Terrell Carter in a different capacity uh, via socials, but this is the, this is the Terrell <laughs> I met years ago. Like, I'm talking about heavily hip-hop minded <laughs> like really rapper yeah. rapidy rap rap rapper type <laughs> Terrell like that's who I met back in the day man and he was doing work on these bars so listen all of these all this stuff we're saying casually like Trace will survive rap will survive like that came from a place those those were landmarks in my life bro yeah. but what started this dude put me in the gauntlet bro when I first met him Uh-oh. he was driving the black charger called it the, the mamba and he was in the driver's seat. Uh, Pittman was in your pass- passenger. Shout out to B. Pitty. Deontay was in the whip. I was in the whip. And Aaron Fluellen was in the whip. And they found out I could rap. They was like, oh, you got bars? Okay. And I'm in the back middle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> having to spit bars. And then they was like, oh, man. You know, you know, you know it was whack when they, like, the thing they compliment was not music at all. It was like, dang, bro. Damn, your voice, man. You got a rapper voice. You got voice. a rapper voice. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my intro. They said, yeah, yeah. But yeah. 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 So you remember so, that? 
I do. I do. I remember a few versions of that. Like there was, it wasn't just that night. There were multiple, you know, my brother oh, yeah. came into the equation. We were all, Marlo was, was involved. So all of these people, you may or may not know, we're just using them casually because they're part of our life. But this man is, is a rapidy rapper um, in, in origin. So listening yeah. to old you is interesting. It's watching the game tape. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, like this season that I'm in right now is re- is crazy on a lot of levels um, because five years ago, six years now, actually, I made a very conscious decision to stop making music because I was at this season in my life where am I going to pursue music as a career or is it going to be a hobby? You know what I'm saying? I feel like people don't make that concrete decision and like, they try to say it's a hobby so that the expectation is lower, but like in their heart of hearts, they want to blow yeah. and hope that this takes right. off. But if yeah. you're not clear about it, you'll find yourself spending, yeah. you're, you'll be investing career money, yeah. but reaping some hobby type Bro. residual. And, and like, I, I ain't with that. So I made that decision to chill. You know what, man? That's When you say that, I it, it gets into like an arena of conversations, decision making that I... I hope that a lot of aspiring artists are having um, where they're, they're, they're actually outlining their expectations of return. Oh, bro. Like, yeah. what do you hope to get out of this? Like, there are people, you know, we, we uh, are followers of Christ, and we know a lot of people who <laughs> make music for Jesus. Um, and that's the phrase. But when it comes <laughs> down to it, <laughs> they want to sell records. Exactly. Like you, you don't, yeah. when you make a project and you put your money, time and attention and heart into something you make yeah. artistically, yeah. you want to see a return. Mm-hmm. And I guess like on a, on a baseline level, I'm trying to just convince people who love the Lord that there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, bro, not at Absolutely. all. Treat it's business like just, business. Like it's business. Yeah. I just recently had a conversation with a guy who was asking me to like help him with you know, setting himself up, getting him on iTunes, setting his website up and all that. And he just gave me the deep spiel, the, you know, just decide, you know, work, oh, work, work, his, work his wages. And it's like, okay, like, just, just say you want to sell some records, dog. Like, and that, it's I think okay. it's completely okay. It's okay. Like, it's completely it's okay. okay. It's Whatever okay. you choose to do. I mean, if you're making cakes for the Lord, like, yeah. you, it, I want this, it should create some type of resource. It but. Should. You go, also, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, nah, like I was saying, because that's part of it. Like as a as a Christ follower, you yeah. know, I got to be intentional about the steps that I'm making, how I'm going to provide for my family. But I only have 24 hours in a day. Yes. And when I stand before God, like my, my album sales or people that I reach through music would be a small sliver of the conversations I'm going to have to have with guys. Like in yes. pursuit of that record, how'd you treat yes. your lady? Yes. Uh, do your kids know you because yes. you were there or because they read your Instagram posts? Yes. You know, yep. like who are you involved in your community? What, how are you active in your church? Yep. Um, your, your family, your in-laws, Real. like relationships, you know, yes. and if you sacrifice all of that and reach whatever pinnacle of success you want it, in my eyes, I think that that's a failure. If you famous, everybody know you got all the money, but your wife ain't proud to be yours. It wasn't worth it. So back then, though, six years ago, I, f- I had this crossroad because I was working a pretty decent job. But it was one of those jobs like I was good at, but like my heart wasn't in it. You know, it was making decent money, but I knew it wasn't my passion. So I said, what are my passions? Music was one and cutting hair was one. Mm. And I read a quote that said, if you chase two rabbits, you'll catch neither one. You know what I'm saying? There's so many dope rappers, so many dope barbers. If I tried to be dope at both, mm-hmm. I'd be average at both. Yeah. So yeah, what's going down? There we go. There we go. No, we, we in the field. <laughs> yeah, we in London. You don't know what's up, COVID <laughs> or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, love that. But dude, you know what? You know one thing, dude. If I had, if I had a chance to sit down with any young aspiring artist, um, I would advise them to take love out of the equation. Like, it really don't matter how much you love making music. It doesn't. It's, it's like, does it make sense for your life, especially the people around you? I had to sit down and with rap and with uh, barbering cosmetology, like say, okay, let's define success on both of these. Mm-hmm. That's you? That's you. Famous? Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. That's from LA. I don't know who that is. <laughs> look, it's look, different. look at him. That was a nice stunt. He's still stunting during the coronavirus. I'm, He's still getting caught. That, <laughs> no. No. We, we, don't worry. Let us have him for a second. He'll get back to you. <laughs> but real talk, I was like, okay. Because I love both. I love cutting. I love making music. So let's just take love out of the equation. Let's look at who my wife is. What, what are her expectations from her husband? Mm-hmm. My wife is like, you know, you know, like if you're going to make music, if you're going to make money in music, yeah. you're going to have to be on the road. You know, For you're sure. going to have to be really away from the crib. You ain't home every day, 6 p.m. tucking yep. babies and eat. But that's my wife's expectation. Yeah. And being married, there's a part of sacrifice that I had to do. Like, I, I if I'm a 10 on the ambition scale, but my wife is a six, mm-hmm. if I want us to work, I can't force her to be a 10. You know what I'm saying? I can encourage her up to an eight, but I might have to sacrifice some of my extremes in order to be with this wife in the, for, for the long term. So let me bring this factor into, into all of this because I feel you. And, you know, we're all with someone. Mm-hmm. What if you don't have nobody? What is the acceptable amount uh, of grind? In oh, a, if you in not with nobody, it, I person if you not if I wasn't with anybody, I would have did both. Okay, but I knew I couldn't do three things. Got you. You know what got I'm you. saying? I think I, I had the job, got my family, but we all got that kind of side yeah. element, you know, that we yeah. could do from six p.m. to two a.m. Yeah, but it's when you try to mix in a few of those extracurriculars. So I just had to pick one, yeah. and I said. If I own a salon, let's just define success on both. Okay, if I am, you know, I own four salons, I cut in one, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be crazy work, but I'll, I at least will be home by six, seven o'clock. My wife will see me every night. I'll be able to go to sleep with her. Let's define success in music. Like if I were to be successful. But that's it. Okay. Yeah. So let's stay right there. Yeah. Let's define success in music. What is me? What is success for, for me at the time? It was like I can provide for my family with this, okay. like the career, a decision. living wage, uh, or more than a living. What do you define as living wage? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I, like I, that's I a great it. question. What, what, like it's all it's all individual. It is relative. For some, it's relative. Like for some people, it's I really just want to get these bars off. For some people, it's just a creative release. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if for everybody, it's a creative release, at least at the starting point. Yes. And then you hit that crossroad of, you know, do I want to continue it to be a creative release or do I want to make some money or mm-hmm. like, what do I, or yeah. do I want it to open another door into something else? Maybe mm-hmm. it becomes public speaking, maybe it becomes helping other artists, like some form of fashion. You know, Bubba Sparks is an a and for Interscope. So he's rapping, his career booty, booty. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, hey, that's your, song. Career, your career's that's over. Song. Google Bubba Sparks. Yo, Deliverance is a fire album. Don't do that. I'm just uh, saying. Oh, I'm doing it. Go <laughs> ahead and Google that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, that was great. Um, <laughs> but then you open up that door, and then you say, okay, well, now that my career is over, I've hit that, and I've hit that measure of success, yeah. and now I'm about to bring the next wave in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. it's literally relative. Well, you know, I think, of, I think of, again, like the whole concept of a living wage and, and that being relative, like... If you're okay living in New York City, uh, a 800 square foot apartment mm-hmm. in the mecca of creativity and inspiration, and you go and do uh, a certain kind of venue, uh, a show in a certain kind of a venue that holds a certain amount of people that allows mm-hmm. you to maintain that lifestyle, mm-hmm. then maybe you're happy and fulfilled. But it's still it's still kind of one of those things where you have to look at your life. Like, what does your life consist of? Right. If your life, if you want to get married to somebody, what mm-hmm. are you bringing to the table? You're presenting a lifestyle. Like, I go do shows in bars that at max capacity is like 42 people. Mm-hmm. Right? And it makes me the money to pay my bills. But is that something you're interested in? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, is that something you yeah. want to be a part of? Like, because if I enter another human into this equation, we're going to be tight. Mm-hmm. Unless you got ambitions yeah. and... There's a whole lot of things like, you know, just so when we talk about creativity and and being an artist and loving making music, we don't talk about those things enough, in my opinion. So I think that's a dope thing. But I think I'm going to be honest, bro. I just don't see enough people like they they love making music, want to make music, but they forget that this is a music business. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's business. So when I define success, 
businesses are not successful if they don't make money. Yes. I, it just is what it is. Yes. Now you can people, you know, oh no, I started my first business, but I learned, yeah. blah blah blah. So I didn't take it as a loss. It was a it was a learning experience. That don't mean that that business was successful. Right. I'm grateful for what you learned, <laughs> but success means. Like I, I am drawing revenue from this. So you, so you can look yeah. at it as an investment. You can say I made an investment into a longer term goal, which is what, which is to make a profit. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> sure. Like you know, like yeah. I, I mean, yes. that's with any business. I think yes. like you use both. Like yeah. Like you've you've both made albums before. Yes. And you're like, yo, here's my 10, 15 k budget. Yeah. Right. You know, and like you got to do everything within that. Yeah. You're expecting to not just make your money back. I'm trying to yes. exponentially yes. go more than that. I mean, that's that's godly. Yep. Yeah. People that took their five talents, they came back flipped. Yes. I got 10 now. Yes. So I think like when I was with the music, that's what I was like. All right. Success. Because one thing when I got, you know, when Chris start taking off and we start having conversations and he kind of let me behind the curtain. Yeah. And the guys that I knew were doing it full time, mm -hmm. I started learning how much they made. Bro. And I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Facts. Wait a minute. Facts. Bro. All right, I'm at Chase, entry Bro. level. Facts. That's why you think I stayed where I was. I was at Aetna. I was like, look, I'm not Bro. doing a, a, a tour for 17 youth kids, you know, youth kids. Like, that's because that's, that's its own genre. Yeah. And, and then coming away with peanuts. Talking yeah. about in Jesus' name. Yeah. Nah, fam, I need health insurance. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you said <laughs> living wages. So, yeah, like, I mean, you can go in the music arena, do it right. You touring, you got streams, you got other yeah. merch and all that. And, and come away with 50 a year, 60 yeah. a year. Yep. However, there's another commodity that I don't think get, that I think doesn't get calculated in that. And it's how much time. Did yes. it take you to make 50K? 100%. A lot of, I mean, you writing records, you editing videos, yep. you doing graphics, you traveling, doing the show, traveling back. So that 50K somebody makes as an independent artist might take them 70, 80 hours a week. Yep. Where your per hour rate lower than the guy at Chase who hit, I put 40 hours in and that frees up a whole nother 40 to, to do something else. So I think that that's part of like, that's why you got to take love out of the equation. Because if pursuing <laughs> it monetarily does not make sense. It yeah, it's, it don't matter if I love it, if it don't make me money. So, so, so. Yeah. This and it, is, when it comes to business. Yeah. This is, this is an important conversation. A sober minded conversation. Because a lot of times you get the romantic aspect of of making music like i do it for the love mm -hmm. you know i like i'm like you know all this different yeah. stuff yeah. but again like time is an investment family is an investment like mm -hmm. you, you have these aspirations that go beyond that but getting back to the craft itself mm. what um when was the first time somebody told you you were whack the first <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Yo, I was about to do the, 